All right, so I am wrecking my first game tonight and I'm wondering what I got myself into. <laughs> I've been studying for months. I passed my test, I got my modules done, I did all of this stuff, and really they say that all that is to just get you to your first game because you just don't know what to expect. So I worked on my outfit, I got all the things I needed to get, and then also um, they say the first game really just work on positioning because you can't worry about penalties yet. You really won't know those things because there's just so much going on. So worry about icing, worry about offsides, worry about things like that. But um, they paired me up with a pro, so hopefully it will go well, and I'm going to tell you how it all went after it's all done. So I got done repping my first game, and I have some thoughts. Actually, I've done two. I've done four, actually. So I did two my first night, and then a week later, I did two my second night. First night, I was uh, not feeling great. I was tired. I was sore. I wasn't happy. I felt like I was terrible at it. And I honestly may have quit, except for I already had the second one scheduled, and the second one was so much better. So I want to teach you the things I learned before the first game and then between the first game and the second game to kind of help you get into your repping. So number one, I will tell you, it is a lot of work. Not only are you skating for however long the game is, an hour or an hour and 15 minutes, but you're also on your feet. So even if you're not sore, you are going to be, your feet are going to be sore because you're going to be on them for a very long time. So at the end of my second game, somebody said something to me that actually just changed everything, which was don't skate so hard. And I'm not saying don't skate hard enough to keep up with the play, but you kind of can watch the game and say, okay, so if I'm skating down here, this is gonna turn around really, really fast. So watch the play and make sure that you're not sprinting back and forth and back and forth and back and forth because that's when you're going to get really, really tired. You're really going from blue line to red line and really probably not further than that, except for occasionally you're gonna have to pick up for your partner, but other than that, don't skate as hard, but it is a lot of work and it's going to be something where you're going to have to be semi in shape to be able to do it. Number two, and this is something people said to me over and over again, but I didn't really click until I got to my first game, was all the studying you're doing, your tests, your seminars, everything is just to get you to that first game. And what that means is you're going to have no idea what it's going to be like until you get to that first game. And when you get out there, things will start to click of like, oh, I learned this and this is where I need to be and this is why I need to be here. So your first game is going to be more of a learning experience than everything you study until that point. But you're going to be able to use the things that you have learned as you're getting through that to get to that first game. Number three, and everybody told me this, but again, it didn't really click till I got there, is don't worry about everything the very first time. Hopefully you have a really good ref association that will not only set you up with the shadow your first game. So when I went out there, I had somebody with me who had been doing it for years saying, okay, that's icing, raise your hand right now. Okay, that's offside. And it's not that I don't know those things. It's just there's so much going on all the time that you're like, oh, what, where's my hand going? What am I doing? What do I say? When do I blow my whistle? And so having somebody there is amazing but then also having a partner with you that first couple games that knows what they're doing so they can kind of cover for you. So what I was told my first game is focus on your positioning. That's the most important thing. Your partner will call all penalties. Don't worry about penalties. And I will tell you that I'm pretty good at picking out penalties, but when you're out there and you're trying to also figure out offsides and where you're supposed to stand and all that, penalties are, was that a penalty? I don't, really know because there's just so much going on in your head. Um, the other thing after four games I still don't, <laughs> I still have a hard time with is figuring out numbers of people who scored, right? You're supposed to be tracking like, okay, this person got the assist, this person scored. First couple games, don't worry about it at all because you are just, you just need to worry about positioning. And so the number thing is easy because when somebody scores, just go up to the team and say, hey, who scored that? And they'll let you know because in your first couple games, you need to worry about your basics, your fundamentals, and you need to get those down before you start adding things on. Number four, and this is the most exciting part, is that it will make you better at hockey. Not only, I mean, after four games, I've done four games, that's nothing. But after that, I feel that I'm more sure on my skates when I'm out playing. I feel like I know the game better. I know where I'm supposed to be standing. When I was refing, these people were, there was like four people in front of the net whacking at the puck trying to get it in, right? And I'm like, that's you're not gonna score that way. And yet I do that when I play hockey. And so it kind of makes me realize like this is pointless. Don't whack at the stick right now. Figure out a better game plan than this. So 
Not only will it make you better at skating because you're getting additional ice time and the ice time without a stick, I have to tell you, is is amazing. It's It actually helps you skate in such a weird way that um, I didn't expect, but it also kind of helps you recognize the game a little better and it slows the game down a little bit so you can kind of see what's going on um, while you're in it. So. I'm excited I did it. I feel like after that first couple games, if I had quit, I would have always regretted it, but it was so miserable, I might have. But then my second couple games were great, and I feel like I'm gonna go back and do it, and I'm gonna get better. There's so much more to go because I am still not great at it, um, but it's a base, and I can start building from here. But I would just say that get out, and if you're going to start refing, do it as much as possible because it is a skill, and you wanna keep building on that. So hopefully next month I get a bunch of assignments and I can start learning more. But if you have any questions about this, let me know if you are considering being a ref. I can give you the step-by-step -step guide on how to sign up and how to do that. And don't forget to subscribe below so I can bring you more videos like this. Thank you.